Wow, that looks great. I hope there's an action figure. Hey guys, I'm doing a random toy review this week, which also serves as a preview of the next comic review, Gen 13. We're looking specifically at the Wildstorm Caitlin Fairchild action figure from AnotherWorld.com and Aegis, whoever the heck that is. That's the company logo on the back of the card, and that's the company name on her foot. I have no idea who they were. There is a site, up, uh, site set up at that domain, but uh, I doubt that they're related to that company. Limited backstory. I've always just assumed that Caitlyn was the team leader of Gen 13, but I'm still in the middle of the first trade, so I can't verify that yet. Caitlyn is in college when she's recruited to take part in some kind of government internship. It's actually a program looking to ac activate the superpowers within the children of previous test groups, but more on that in the next review. So, before we judge this figure too harshly, you have to remember that before McFarlane came along and changed the standard sculpting practices of the toy industry, uh, toys weren't always that well rendered. Some lines, like the superpowers from the 80s, still look ridiculously fun to this day, but other types were barely recognizable as the characters they were meant to represent. I'm looking at you, Hannah Dundee. I have seen this figure released in at least three different types of packages, uh, but I've never seen any of the other characters. From what I've known of Gen 13, it seems like the two most popular characters were always Caitlyn Fairchild and Grunge. But Caitlyn is the only one that I know of that has ever seen a release. Weird. Caitlyn stands at approximately six inches tall in her signature green and purple bathing suit slash thong. Oh, the 90s. Overall, she's got nine points of articulation. Her head turns left and right, there's an arm swivel at the shoulders, and there's a V-shaped leg swivel. There's also extra articulation at the elbows and knees, which was actually pretty great for back in 1998. Back then, figures either had limited posability, or they had practically zero. It was the difference between the six points of articulation found in lines like the Power of the Force or Power of the Jedi lines, and the plastic statues, which were McFarlane toys. Her stance is very bent kneed, and I suppose that plays to her nerdy-like nature in the beginning of the series, and isn't related to poor tooling or sculpting. Caitlin comes with her T797 folding laptop computer, Hyper Batman and XR24L, and exercise bar. I'm sorry, I know it was the 90s and everything, and everything was about over-the-top extremes, but what the f*** is the other handle and trigger for? I assume that's the shotgun feature of the weapon, judging by the grip in front of the trigger there, but it has no room to move with the fucking bipod legs. And then it just shoots both types of ammo out of the same barrel? That doesn't seem right. But anyway. She was completely out of scale with most figures of the day. It's not like your 1992 Kenner Batman Returns figure could hang out with her. Not without a story note that mentally suggested she had been hit with some kind of ray that turned her into an Amazonian. Man, my superpowers Batman has seen better days. Speaking of which, here's a comparison shot with a couple of Batman figures from 6 inch down to 3.75, or 3 and 3 quarters for those in the know. Seems appropriate. She does pretty well fitting in with the modern 6 inch crowd, but definitely can't hold a candle to the modern articulation. This figure is a weird one. At times she's undoubtedly hideous, and at others she looks pretty great. At least she does in this shot to me. It all depends on what angle she's at. Like right here, it looks great. I had this figure back in the day and her arm used to fall off at the right elbow all the time. Uh, I recently bought this one still in the package and she seems to have all her own issues. You can see the paint flub on her left boobage. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a paint defect or rubbing in the plastic for 21 years. Also there are black spots in the hair and a couple of flecks of, I guess, black paint on her thighs. The biggest issue though is when I raise her arms above her head there's a, uh, a distinct pop. And you can see that her torso is separated at the shoulders. I assume that the T-posts of her arm are not completely circular, and that when you turn it, it forces the two sides of her body away from each other. So I'm always having to squeeze her back together at the torso when I do anything. As a side note, this isn't the only Fairchild figure they did. There was a 12-inch one with her own type of gun and a limited Chromium comic book inside. A friend actually gave me this one uh, as a gift, and it had all of its own problems, like the hair falling off. Also, it had nipples. Not bad, just saying. Overall, the manufacturer on the 6-inch figure seems to be middle of the road. Nowhere near the best and not Mexican bootleg. Just know, if you buy one, 
that mechanically it's not going to be the perfect experience you're hoping for. I'd say that it's past due that they made modern versions of this figure and her teammates. Gen 13 is owned by DC now since Jim Lee sold Wildstorm, and I believe Spin Master is getting the license to DC toy products now. I guess we'll see how that goes. I would assume it's unlikely that they're going to make these figures, though. That's it, guys. Short video this week. Uh, I'll be back with a complete review of the first Gen 13 trade. Until then, thanks for watching. Subscribe, tell a friend, and I'll see you then. Bye.